Hello and welcome back everyone to Rocket Rabbit Commentaries run through of Legacy of the Void campaign in StarCraft 2 as we continue the infinite cycle. The doors are open. Uh-oh. The constructs destroyed. Behold, a new species of hybrid, the hybrid behemoth, I think. I don't actually remember uh, what the uh, red, what the uh, uh, red uh, augment uh, uh, hybrid is technically called. I think the the normal one is the hybrid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get to that shrine. Yes. The audio mixing guy is on vacation. So, uh, infinite cycle is, uh, as I mentioned multiple times in the last part, effect effectively just a massive lore dump. It's a it, we get a li very interesting lore in this mission, certainly, but that's really all that we're getting here. You know, just a bunch of lore and and, uh, and solarite research. Well, no, he hasn't, because Kerrigan's death, um, uh, Kerrigan's death does not actually happen in this campaign. Our path is clear. The future hmm. is ours. The future is ours. See, if they're both focusing on Metatac, they can take it down before it drops anything, but hello, Mr. Oh, Laser Beam. Easy. Goodbye, oh, Mr. Boy. Laser Beam. See you later. Ha, <laughs> lightning dash the Reapers. Yeah, a a Amon promised them uh, both liberation and power, and they weren't smart enough to, re to recognize that that doesn't mean anything right now. No ah, Kerrigan, we find your dry wit rather refreshing. Spawn banelings to kill the Goliath. Strength in unity. The future is ours. The future is, you know, in about four minutes. Behold, Mr. Laser Beam. It actually helps us in this fight. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, I hope that laser is, you know, not discriminate on who enters into the effective range. It's a goddamn energy beam. I mean, yeah, but, you know, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if we were playing as uh, Amon, uh, or Amon during this, I would really hope that the laser wouldn't actually hurt our forces. Despite how nonsensical that is. There can be no Dark doubt. Templars can survive the laser yeah, Only for beam. a little while. <laughs> so is your past, though, so... I need answers. Well, we'll be getting answers very shortly, Miss Kerrigan. It's okay. For the ability to play the rest of the campaign. Huzzah! Oh, I see. We only needed to just enter this area, and now the, and now the yeah, countdown Yeah, because, no, because now the hybrid are more focused on us than uh, destroying the temple. Yeah. Well, says you. This guy is ignoring us, and it's not cool, man. It's like, what is that scratching me? How dare you! I'm going to slap you repeatedly. So yeah, if you know if you know how to uh, space out Ar Artanis' abilities uh, easy, um, decently, you can effectively stun lock this uh, this behemoth using well not uh, not stun lock but mitigate its uh, actions using a lightning dash because lightning dash does have a stun on it for uh, uh, for a majority of what it hits. Legolas, what's your elf I see? Mm. And so the final, the final of the origin story. Of us, within the chamber of ascension, the Zelmaga have slumbered as civilizations grew, fell, and formed again. Because that is what when civilizations do, Mister Cloud. When the two destined races arrive, then, then they'll use polymerization in order to become a new thing. Of the infinite cycle. So yeah, the whole pl the whole plan of the Zelnaga is to continuously re uh, create more of itself, um, you uh, using seeds of creation. So, what do you say? Ready to meet your maker? Indeed. Come. 
Huh, those are strong words, Kerrigan. Unfortunately, well, fortunately for you, Artanis is not aware of the... Uh, of what that particular turn of phrase means. <laughs> well, it's technically literal in this sense, but... Something's not right here. Yeah, the pylons aren't very bright. Well, yeah, col Well, yeah... Well, colloquially, colloquialisms are not meant to be taken literally. They have, they usually have an arbitrary meaning. Behold, the corpse of Cthuloids. No. They're dead, Artanis. Mm. Of course they're dead. They've been stuck in here this entire time. Uh, no, actually. Zelnaga do not need to eat. They feast on void energy, and uh, Olnar is uh, is brimming with the shit. So, very mine. Behold the spoilers. So yeah. Amon's end goal in this Behold. game is to build a Protoss body. Which is really weird because, is... to be perfectly honest, as long as Amon's in, uh, in an area that has a decent amount of void, he doesn't need a body. It's not so easily broken, Amon. Yeah, but Artanis, that isn't where Amon is right now. That's just a void wave, and uh, you don't actually have void resistance. We have achieved Yay! victory. We activated Resurgence zero times. What Resurgence is, is Artanis' ability to, if he ever gets to, to zero HP, um, he once every five minutes can resurrect himself and Kerrigan There's at full health. Ah, fuck you, Talarak. I can just appear wherever I want. Yeah, that's what that's what this Get seems framed. like, but no, Alarak uh, it's never explained exactly how Alarak gets onto the Spear of a Dune. Nor uh, nor is his support uh, vessel shown. Why convenience? If he could do it, if he could do it now, why why didn't he exactly. do it before? <laughs> and this particular gadget we never get to use again, despite it being very useless. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to pull that one on somebody. <laughs> it just made me as jolly as I hoped it would. Fuck you, Alarak. I will grant that Alarak's lines and delivery are amazing. But at the same time, I fucking hate Alarak. I'm your precious leader, and any who oppose Amon. I can guide you to Artanis before this fate befalls him. If we are bold, we can stop the Dark God's assault. Seriously, he sounds really goddamn cool in these scenes, but he's also an arrogant fucking dick the entire campaign. And I do mean the rest of the campaign. And I dislike you. Amon has betrayed my people. Retribution will be claimed for this. And if your hierarch survives, he will aid in it. Make your decision. You will take us to Artanis. Most wise. Also, I think Alarak is voiced by the original uh, Archon voice actor, but I'm not sure. I have some rather sobering news. We have new guests in our chamber. Hey, Phoenix. He uses a different cologne. All right, cologne. so, 
I can smell we now it. Don't have away access from over to here. the shield recharge uh, passive as well as the mass as well as mass recall. But instead, we're going to be spending the rest of our uh, al uh, al um, assignable solar into getting solar lance over our orbital bombardment. Mostly because solar lance does 300 damage uh, in um, in um, in a spread that uh, in a spread that I can uh, control relatively easily. Mm. So. Yes, with Alarak joining our uh, Alarak joining our vessel, we now have access to the Bloodhunter Dark Templar. I don't use them. These purifiers have joined our army, Such is the fate of many of these new constructs. Yeah, unfortunately, them, a majority of, uh, a majority of the uh, factional variants that we that we have access to, I don't end up showing off. I would have liked to show off the adepts because the adepts actually have a really really cool um, uh, activated spell. But we're moving into Harbinger of Oblivion, so we're not really supposed to be using um, a stalker, a stalkers that much in this mission anyway. We're supposed to be using a bunch of High Templar, and we would if High Templar were cost-efficient to use, but they are not. Most of what we'll be using in this uh, in this mission are going to be a combination of Zealots and, and uh, Annihilators, because Annihilators are awesome! I am waiting for you. Matriarch. Templar have volunteered to aid you. And the reason why we haven't had them uh, before is because they're just now recovering from the loss of the Kala. We are ready to serve once again. Templar, I thank you for your bravery in this dire time. We will recover our higher. Yes, we will. In the next part. We're, the, for the rest of this part, we're just going through pre preamble for Harbinger of, of Oblivion. So, tutorial for High Templar. They are just factually one of the best goddamn spellcasters in the entire game. Psionic Storm does a boatload of fucking damage. Um, and, it, uh, and it does it in such an area of effect that it is really effective against the majority of lighter units. And a good portion of what we're fighting in this, uh, in this uh, level is lighter units, specifically uh, Marines and Zerglings. The big issue that you have to worry about with uh, with High Templar when you're playing in multiplayer is that the Psionic Storm has the ability to hurt your own uh, units. The other spell that they get is Feedback, which allows us which allows us to hurt our uh, en our enemy spellcasters with a with a damage equivalent to however much enemy energy they have directly to their HP. It is honestly a very good it is honestly a very good uh, spell to use against against the. Uh, uh, against the hybrid dominators and hybrid uh, sages that we end up fighting uh, towards the end of the mission But we won't honestly be using the high templar all that much because although they are really good They are as I already said rather expensive 50 minerals 150 gas and I think two psi No, they will not But it's up to you to seal that port. Well, I mean, dramatically, they will bear the brunt of Amon's power and buy them time. We will need to destroy them if we are to seal the gate. Then it shall be done. Yes, it will. Next part. Checkpoint. All right. Uh, now we also have access to Tier 2 ground upgrades, which is very nice. And we're going to try and storm these guys, right? Yep. Shut down their damage. Destroy their miners. I hope you're getting ready to disable those crystals. I'll continue sending as many Zerg as I can spare to help you. Which is very nice of her, but a majority of what she sends are Zerglings and Hydralisks. I mean, I like the Hydralisks, I do, but she sends them in such small numbers that it's not really uh, really worth comment, uh, commentating on. You'll notice that we get access to uh, three Vespin Geysers, which I will talk about in the next part.